What's up YouTube? Dero here with another Eternal Return video. Since a lot of you guys like the old Lee Dai Lin uh, rank 1 build, I decided to make another one for season 5 since Nunchuck has been like the best build for Lee Dai Lin at the moment and a lot of people still don't know that for some reason. I recently got Immortal with Lee Dai Lin as my main character. I climbed to Immortal with this build. It's gonna be uh, on the screen right now. It's gonna be 3274 if you want to copy the build. This build is available on my Discord and also on the character hub. And before I show you how to route this, I'm gonna explain the build. So you're gonna go blue tree, which is gonna give you like crit, cooldown, and heal cut all in one item, by the way. Optical camouflage suit, virtuous outlaw, which gives you swift strides, really good for the early game. Lace quiver is a glass cannon, like a DPS item, gives you attacks, it gives you movement speed, really good for early game as well. And Bucephalus. If you're running a crit character, you typically want Bucephalus. So for late game items, we're gonna go with like Hydra and not Cerberus, very important thing. We go Hydra because it does Echoing Strike, it has 80% attack scaling, right? It gives you crit, armor pen, attack speed, all in one item. In my opinion, this is one of the most broken items right now in the game. So if you're not running this on Lee Dai Lin, like, I don't know what you're doing. Like, it's it's not, it's, it's just that good. It's just that good, all right? Like Spectre, you're running because this is the uh, maximum attack power that you can get from a chest piece. That's also a crit item, right? Because you're gonna need like three crit items whenever you're running a crit character. So yeah, Dylan's no exception to that. Uh, Halo is because you want to be able to like uh, have your bitter plus Echoing Strike plus Halo prop in the initial hit. It's gonna make your right legs really beefy. And it also allows you to deal damage to fellow bruisers slash tanks. It's a four score, I know, but you know, it's worth it. It's really good for Dylan. Uh, Psych Blade is our item of choice for the arm. It gives us movement speed, which is always nice. It gives us armor pen, and it gives us one of the highest attack stats in the game. Like, if you look at the other items, right? Auto Arms is 45 uh, attack power. Then you have, like, what? You have Chain of Thorns, 44 attack power, right? What else, right? We have like 30 attack power prominence, 28 attack power blood ripper, 45 attack power red chromonicon. Have you guys noticed something? Yes, you can get that amount of attack power on just a Mitchell item. That's why you go Psych Blade. Coupled with the fact that it has like movement speed and armor pen as well. This is really, really good. And of course, the last item are boots. We go Alexander because it gives us the most attack power possible. You can opt for uh racing boots if you want attack speed in your build but that's it anything beyond this is like too much in my opinion right but i this is our bis build if you get necromonicon or blood ripper in the late game switch like uh, that for psych blade because this is like the best form of heal cut you can get and it's like you know it's more it's more like attack power uh, prominence is also another blood blood item that you can get from a box which is fine to swap with your psych blade so you can have CDR. For the augments, we are going to go with Bitter Retribution. Bitter Retribution is really good for Lee Dai Lin because it allows Dai Lin to choose her damage openings. You can get poked, right, by people and then you can like go in and deal a lot of damage. Or you can use this as your form of sustain if you get poked a lot and you're trying to kite people. You get to regen the HP back. It's very flexible. I know there are some other augments out there like the Siphoning Maelstorm and the Frailty that you can use for all in. But Bitter is just way better, in my opinion, for its flexibility because it has damage mitigation. It has slow, which enables you to do more right clicks. And it just helps you like survive overall. And it's blue, right? That's one of the most important things, right? You want blue augments on Dylin. I typically would run Painkiller and then like Calvacade. And then for support augments, you will run Coin Toss and Penny Pincher. And you're like, oh, why are you not running more damage on this build? Why are you running green augments? It's because Lee Dylin needs to snowball or needs a good start needs the items very item dependent character and you don't want to have that adc treatment to be honest because you want your uh your teammates also deal a lot of damage so you want to be self-sufficient you you need to be independent with lee dai lin so for tactical skill we are going with blink blink is lee dai lin's most flexible like tactical skill in the game it's really good for br really good for securing kills and for running away kiting ratting whatever it is that is gonna be related to combat and on the BR aspect of the game, Blink is just Dylan's best tactical skill straight up.
For skill leveling, we will go Q first. And then, like, we will go W. You can go E if you're gonna kill chicken. But you can kill chicken and hotel, like, right away with Q. I'll show you in a bit. Then you go E. Then you go W again. Then you go passive. Always max your passive first. Then your ultimate. Then you go W again. Three levels in W is usually what I prefer. You can go four levels of W. But uh, over here, it just depends on, like, uh, what you want to do. You want to farm more? I suggest you level your E. You wanna like fight more? I suggest level your W. But yeah, I prefer like leveling like uh like the E and then like leveling W again. Just having one level in E feels kinda eh in terms of damage output. You have like a R after maxing out your passive, you level up your R, and then you go like max your W, then you max your E, right? And then level your R, then you level your Q again. Now, if you want to have a lower cooldown on your Q, you can off to level your Q. But if you want more damage, I suggest like uh, leveling your E because it's more consistent. Your Q is more used not for damage but instead for mobility. All right. Remember, it's more important to use your Q for mobility than for damage. Lidai Lin is an attack. Lidai Lin is like a bruiser assassin. Okay. With all that said, let's go right into how you route. You start in hotel, then you go to like a uh, forest. Okay. You spawn right. If you spawn over here. You kill the chickens, Q, Q, Q. You get these items, right? Another thing that you need to do is you get a nail and you get a rubber, right? This nail and rubber, as uh, you might have guessed, it's for transition items. The reason why you Q, Q, Q over there at the chicken is for free mastery. And you also get another Q up anyway when you're going to the TP. Now we go to forest, right? You can opt for, you can opt for like Bread of Tears if you want a fast level 6, if you see a ping. Or you can just make like uh you can just make breakfast. Like breakfast is like better though. If you wanna min max, you, you can like you should go breakfast because you kill two chickens here anyway. Get your flower, get your rock. Like as you can see at the timer, right? Like uh, it's very it's very very fast. It's very very fast build. You will get this full build by 120, 130. Don't need to like uh rush this too much, but if you want to farm early kills, the better of course. Right? Now uh, you see this? You have 20 seconds of free time, right? 20 seconds of free time. What you can do over here is grab your transition items, maybe kill somebody. You can kill this, right? And then, like, you still have enough time to get the wolves. You can also take console, whatever works for you or whatever is convenient for you at the time. After that, you can kill your wolves. Right? And after you do that, you can like opt to kill people or like farm wherever you want. You can opt to farm over here. You can opt to farm like a hotel. You can opt to farm uptown because there's like two wolves there. You can opt to farm like a chop like a cemetery. It depends on like it depends on what things you see on the map. Remember, like do not count on a fix. Do not count on a fix like routine. Like look at the pings in your map, so you have farm constantly, free farm constantly, like uh, uncontested farm, because that way you're gonna be able to, you know, have a foolproof, foolproof like a uh, flowchart of what to do. You don't wanna follow one routine, right? After the wolves over there, it's a freestyle, right? After you farm the wolves over there, it's a freestyle. You see here, like if you are uncontested right here. You can, you can like farm all this like, uh, all this like wolves, right? And then you'll be right in time for mutants, see? This is like what an ideal like farm rotation looks like, but I'll be covering that in another video. Instead of like, you know, instead of this video. So yeah, this is like the rank 1 Lee Dailin build, right? That I use and also the top Koreans as well, so... If you learned something, like if you like it, you know, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And that's gonna be it for me. Thanks so much for watching this video, boys. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.